Hello there guys, welcome back. You know, men's sunglasses really fall into only a few categories. You have your sport sunglasses, you know, your Oakleys and stuff like that. You have your classic sunglasses, like your Ray-Ban, Clubmaster, Wayfarer. And then you have your sort of military-inspired, wire-framed glasses, your aviators and such. Okay, that's an oversimplification, but if I don't keep things simple, I tend to get confused. So what you see here, this is actually a sampling of my collection of sunglasses. They're not even all here. I have one in my car. I know I have one at work. Um, it's kind of embarrassing how many sunglasses I actually have, especially considering that I really go back to the same pairs over and over and over again. And if I had just saved a little bit of money and bought the pairs that I really like, I could have uh, gotten rid of all of these right here and ultimately spent a lot less on sunglasses. So what I want to let you walk away from this video with is my experience and the three sunglasses that I wear the most out of the, I don't know, 20 pairs I have here. Save yourself the money, get yourself a good pair of sunglasses, take care of it, and it will reward you with years and years of service. Some of these glasses here I've had since I was in my early 20s. So um, they've lasted quite a long time. These are my three picks for the best men's sunglasses of 2020. Number one should come as no surprise. That is the Randolph Engineering Aviators. I believe this is the Aviator 2 model that I have right here. The Aviators are a little bit bigger, but what you have uh, in this particular model, this is the cobalt colored lenses, this bright blue, really cool looking, um, maybe bright, but vibrant is a better word for it, with the matte black frames, just a cool look. And I think it balances a sober yet um, still refined look. The wonderful thing about these glasses, not only are they an independent company outside of the Luxottica umbrella, made in the USA, but they have so many great details that really set them apart from their competitors. And I did a video a while ago about, you know, comparing these to the American optical version, which look very, very similar. If you were to put them side by side, the American optical and the Randolph, you'd be hard pressed to pick out which one was more expensive. That is until you started wearing them. Now, the Randolphs, I noticed I wear much, much more than the American Opticals because of all these little details. Now, the one that really stands out to me, aside from the build quality and just how nicely put together and finished they are, is the nose pads. Whatever compound they're using for these nose pads, I don't wanna say it's sticky because it doesn't leave any kind of residue on your fingers or on your nose or anything like that but the compound that they're using is grippy no matter what. So if I put these on and I'm gonna go out and dig a hole in the yard in the middle of August and I'm sweating, these won't slide down my nose. And I can't say that for any of these other glasses on the table, which have plastic nose pieces. Whatever they figured out for their nose pieces is like magic. That really is almost reason enough to buy these sunglasses. They are amazing. My favorite glasses, of the year, no doubt about it. And I think this cobalt blue lens is, is a total win. Next up should be no surprise because you've seen them pretty much everywhere. That is the Ray-Ban Wayfarer. The great thing about the Wayfarer is that they look good on pretty much everybody. They really do. Anybody can put on a pair of Wayfarers and automatically go up a few points in their cool factor. To be fair, these are the Wayfarer 2, which I believe is a little bit more subtle. I think they took down the sort of horn rimmed, it, they're not even horn rimmed, but whatever that edge of the glasses, I think they kind of curved it off a little bit. I believe the size is a little bit smaller, although the Wayfarers are available in several different sizes. It's just a slightly sleeker version of the Wayfarer, yet it still retains that Wayfarer DNA. And these here are their like tortoise shell with a matte, uh, finish to them. They also have these orange on the inside, blue on the outside arms, which are pretty cool. I bought these right before I went on vacation to Mexico and I thought, you know, these are great vacation glasses. You know, they don't take themselves too seriously. You may not want to wear these to a funeral, but on vacation, in your car, almost anywhere else that you would be wearing sunglasses, I think they're, they're perfect. And the one thing that I don't like about these is how thick that arm is. And this is something that, uh, is really specific to people like me. I don't like the fact that if I wear these for days on end, I will have a white spot going right there. And especially if somebody with like no hair, you really notice that going from your ear out to, uh, to your temple. Not that it's a game changer, not that it'll prevent me from wearing these because I do, but uh, it's something to consider. And finally, we have the Buck model from Salt Optics. Now, Salt Optics is my favorite cellulose acetate sunglass company of all time. Matter of fact, 
my prescription glasses are salt optics. I just think they're, they're wonderful. And looking into it a little bit further, they use more cotton-based cellulose acetate rather than petroleum-based acetate. So if you have an issue with any kind of skin, you know, interaction with, with petroleum products, this may be better off for you. But it's not just that. Absolutely not. Uh, it's their color combination. Salt takes their inspiration from nature. So a lot of times you'll see a lot of different colors which are meant to reflect nature. Now these are handmade in Japan. They're definitely expensive, there's no doubt about it. But once you start wearing a pair of these, everything else that I've tried that's been cellulose acetate, it has really felt like a much cheaper version. So like I said, my prescription glasses are salts. I've had a couple of their sunglasses. My wife has a pair of, plus they have a great standard of ethics. I know that they give back to the environment and stuff. So just take a look at the Salt Optics website because there's a lot of really cool designs there. I think Buck is really a great design, which looks good on pretty much everybody, but Salt Optics is definitely one to check out. Now I thought it'd be kind of neat to see a, a few of the models that I just don't wear. All right, I, I do <laughs> I do have a few here that are kind of embarrassing, and I want to start off with these guys right here. Now, I thought these were the coolest thing going uh, in the 2010s. This is the, is it the gas can? Yeah, the gas can by Oakley. These are like the typical Kyle glasses that you've seen out there. You know that guy, uh, and I, I, I kind of was that guy for a while. They're big, they're thick. Talk about a thick arm. I mean, holy moly, look at those. What I liked about these though is that they would slide under my, my motorcycle helmet and I could easily put them on. Looking back though, um, they were great at the time. I wouldn't wear them now. Matter of fact, I'm not really sure why I keep them. Plus, this is a pretty good, good example of how Oakley uh, quality has started to slide. I have a few Oakleys here in front of me. And what I notice is that along the edges of their lens you start to see a little bit of bubbling almost like it's like rippling so not only on these gas can models that i have right here but also these are a um i don't know a nicer model that i have and i, I used to really really like and they're doing that on these as well so so unfortunately it really seems like oakley uh their quality has slipped quite a bit since they got bought by luxotica i may be completely mistaken but i did notice that the rubber pads on these right here, they start feeling kind of gooey in a way. And I'm not sure if that's just the way they interact with sweat, but you can definitely feel like a stickiness. So unfortunately that's the case there. I also have another pair right here that I used to wear, but these are much, much too small by today's standards. Nothing I would wear anymore. And uh, these I think were really maybe before 2000. And I didn't notice that and that issue on these at all these are still holding up just fine. So there was a, there was something happened after they were bought and changed over, unfortunately. And I kind of keep these just cause I don't want to throw them away, but you know, that's just the way it is. I also bought these Persols a little while ago and I thought they were a great idea. Number one, these are the same model that Steve McQueen wears, I think in bullet. So I was like, oh, that's just great. How cool is that? And they fold up, which is really nice. So you can fold them, you can put them into their little case. You know, they're nice and small and everything like that. But I noticed that in order to unfold them, you really have to sort of touch the lens. It's kind of difficult to put them away and not touch the lens or to, to take them out and not touch that lens. It is possible, but most of the time I would open them up and have to sort of clean them off. What I like about these is that they are adjustable. They have those flexible temples, which are really, really comfortable, and that's great and everything. But I did notice that when they're fully extended in their open position, they're not really square in a way. So in other words, the arms, you can see one goes that way and one's kind of like straight. And I think that's just, you know, issues with the hinges. They're not great. I expected a lot more from Persol. And from what I understand, when Persol was owned, uh, when it was Persol Ratty, they were uh, a wonderful sunglass. And, and one of the ones that uh, you can still buy for a premium because they were such great sunglasses. I thought that Persol would be better. And uh, I don't, I won't be buying any more of those. But I'll show you a pair that I did buy a long time ago, which I'll still wear to this day, and that's these right here. These are actually um, 55 Diesel, and I'm not sure if that's a different division of Diesel or whatever. They're not anything to write home about as far as the quality goes, but I think they got the styling perfect. And if you notice, this is basically like an aviator look with a little bit more of a wraparound kind of deal. And as a matter of fact, I saw these on Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven when they had that little flashback and they're talking to uh, 
Uh, they're talking to somebody. But anyway, he's wearing these, and I thought they looked great. If they look good on Brad, of course, Brad Pitt can make look anything look good, but uh, that's a pair that I still wear, will wear these days. So anyway, guys, if you're going to buy one pair of sunglasses, if you choose one of the pairs that I mentioned today, I have no doubt that you will not regret it, that you can have them for a long time. After all, how many times have you seen this type of sunglass going back into, like, history? Um, they looked good then, they're going to look good now and well into the future. And matter of fact, just handling these other ones and then picking up these Randolphs, you really do notice the extra heft. There are a couple of other brands which I would love to check out, like Lowercase NYC and uh, Globe Specs, but um, I think that my sunglass bases are covered for right now. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll catch you next time.